Well, uh, you know, we had our launch on January the 19th, a three-stage uh, rocket. We have ignition and liftoff of NASA's New Horizons spacecraft on a decade-long voyage to visit the planet Pluto and then beyond. Two, Boosters three, have just jettisoned. Four, five, solid separation looks good. But really, the fourth stage only kicked in today, and that was Jupiter giving us a 9,000 mile per hour boost, half the speed of the space shuttle, launching us now on our trajectory to the Kuiper Belt, to Pluto and beyond. See the Jupiter gravity assist and shaved uh, almost three years off our encounter and allow us to arrive at only eight years from now. You have to hit the aim point in space, it'll take you directly on to Pluto's position, like sh shooting ski, where Pluto will be in the year 2015. And there's only one aim point that will take you precisely to that place and accelerate you at the speed required to exactly hit that ski shot. Well, we had a really exciting day because we started off not knowing how the spacecraft would survive the uh, radiation environment at Jupiter. And Due to physics, we knew that come hell or high water, the spacecraft had made its closest approach. Uh, of course, we wanted to check in with us and tell us, in fact, it had, it was still alive, made its closest approach, and collected data, it was in good health, and had all this data on the recorders and ready to send it back to us. The transfer, brought it up using the Mac template, keep telemetry on time. You guys nervous? Not really. Nothing we can do at this point. That's right, not nervous. <laughs> no. <laughs> not a bit. <laughs> um, I would put it somewhere between launch and actually getting to Pluto. I'd say it's the third most critical activity in, in the whole timeline. Uh, we're really putting the spacecraft through a stress test. That's our primary objective. But uh, as long as we had to stress it, we thought we'd stress it with 700 science observations. Um, we're about about a little less than six minutes away from our first look at uh, telemetry. Uh, we watch to make sure that the um, that the DSN configures correctly um, to the right data rate. If we're not at the right data rate, we won't be getting any data. All every other point that comes from the spacecraft is right now gray because there's no telemetry flowing. When they actually lock up, the, these uh, carrier lock status will go from off to locked, and after that, everything will turn green. Go ahead, put away. Yes, we're now receiving telemetry and we're locked. RF mom on Pluto 1, status check. RF is green. PI, this is mom on Pluto 1. Spacecraft telemetry for all subsystems is nominal. Spacecraft is outward bound from Jupiter and we're on our way to Pluto. Right. 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 Just around noon today, when we got acquisition of signal from the spacecraft, it was right on the timeline, no alarm messages, everything working perfectly, and uh, just sailed right through that tough radiation environment. But everything's looking really good at this point. Station's cooperating, no problems with the station, spacecraft's in a good state, all's well. The science instruments are doing great, everything went well. So all of the maneuvers that we did for all the data taking the past uh, several past days since we had last pass. Various stations called out their condition. It was green, 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 green. You know, uh, the telemetry data came up showing that we had collected data. The spacecraft executed its uh, um, observation sequence perfectly, and we thought, oh, we did it. Very good. Autonomy, it's like being the Maytag repairman. No news is good news. I'm lonely. I'm out of my boat with my fishing rod. And, uh, no one's called. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Jupiter's not our ultimate destination. Uh, it's very nice, uh, you know, that, that we can actually get a lot of great scientific data uh, for free, basically. We get that gravity of boost, the most important thing, but after that, uh, you know, just getting that extra science and the extra practice for doing an encounter. And we've been looking at the image that came down today. We have the tip of the tip of the iceberg, and it's beautiful. We have taken the time out to send down just a half a dozen Wet Your Appetite images, and they, they've got us really set to get more. Alright, so this is, should be the 6 millisecond exposure. There it is. Off the, uh, wow. Okay. Alright, so let's zoom in a little bit here. Two plumes off the limb. 
Okay. Got let's... both. Uh, oh, we got, got the we got the night. Oh wow! Look at that. Oh yeah. And we got the, we got both of them. We got both of them. Well, they were absolutely astounding. We saw uh, uh, the best ever images of these uh, rare but terrifically large volcanic plumes, which erupt uh, above the surface. They rise, you know, hundreds of miles up into space. Uh, they look like gigantic uh, city fountains. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can actually see in the imaging system, or uh, in the images, um, uh, filaments and details of these actual of, of the plume structure, which will help us understand much better how these plumes actually form and propagate and come back down to the surface. Seeing the albedo variation. Oh, how about that one up there? Yeah, yeah. What is that? How about this one here? Is that a mountain? Of course, everything was absolutely ecstatic. I mean, you know, it's all one thing to have ground test and and test in space to, to see that the instruments are working, uh, but you really don't have a sense of reality, of the reality of the, of the mission that you proposed and helped design and build and, and watch it launch and fly is, is really there and really tangible until you see real data from one of your targets. And then you realize, ah, you did it. We're entering the cruise to Pluto, and for the first time, in a more than 17 year enterprise to get the United States out to Pluto in the Kuiper Belt. We are now on the last leg of the journey. This uh, uh, dress rehearsal at Jupiter has uh, convinced us that indeed we have the spacecraft, the instruments, the instruments are working perfectly and we're going to do a killer encounter of Pluto. We just can't wait. We have to wait, but it's just amazing. I wish we could be at Pluto next week. We're going down the, the tail sock of Jupiter and we're screaming out to Pluto.